she can do this one win an all Ireland final so he left under no illusions to anybody they needed to up the game big time and he's got a to just reward they performed brilliantly and they did Liam they did up it yeah they did very much so I mean right throughout the field as I said you know generally when you see that first 15 minutes and you see who's doing the bossing mm. and you yeah. just felt today yeah. that the bossing was being done by, by Kilkenny you know they mm. were they were at the pitch of it they were working very hard I mean Colin Finley went off just before half time there he got a, he put his head in mm. you know mm. to block down Larry mm. Cobb and right, went straight yeah. down the tunnel mm. to get stitched you know yeah. so that just tells you they were going to put their bodies on the line their heads on the line today to make sure they got over the line and you know they built what up they needed that. They needed that bit of. Uh, they need. But they needed everything in the finish too, because you know it was back to three points. You know, at one stage and a goal. You know, we had a few chances. Maybe Benny Dunn came in and Pat Burke had chances. But you know, to be fair, Kilkenny were the better team, and it would have been you know on the day right. they yeah. absolutely deserved the victory because they could have had a few more scores. Wouldn't take anything at all away from Kilkenny's performance today, which was awesome. But. There was a lot of little errors on the tip team today, a lot of little fumbles around the pitch today that was surprising. Yeah, there was, you know, as I said, they just didn't seem to find their rhythm today, you know, mm. right throughout the field. And, you know, normally, like, Shane McGrath, I think, is one of the key players yeah. for Tipperary yeah. in the middle time, of the park. Yeah. And, you know, just early on, you know, the ball, just everywhere Shane went, the ball seemed to go to, to Michael Finley. You know, it was just one of those days. And, you know, just Tip needed someone to grab the game by the scruff of the neck. Yeah. And unfortunately yeah. today, that just didn't happen for them. All right, we have a short break to take here in the programme. Stay with us because we still have lots more to come. Champions of 2011 after defeating Tipperary by two goals and 17 points to one goal and 16 points. You know, in the beginning of the match, we were saying this, Cyril Farrell, Tip be began to lose ground to Kilkenny. They were just slipping away, Kilkenny getting a point and a point and a point, and then they got the goal that really made the difference. Yeah, like Kilkenny at this stage, Michael, were completely on top and Tip had come back into it. They would feel they needed more score, but this, they'll be kicking themselves to this. Watch Henry, lovely little fast ball here. Typical Kilkenny, another little hand pass across here. He has a little look up. Like, you know, it does not the stupid, little flick across here now. This is where the goal comes from. Lovely little pop pass here from Richie Hogan back into Finley, coming on the burst. Six into the back of that. Now, that's a fantastic score. But when Tip will analyse that after, say, Lord, God, it shouldn't have came from that line. It's the line ball that were let down and just kind of, well, kind of ball watching, not really awake to the room. Finley will do that all day. Richie Hogan. Very, very skillful. A lovely little pop pass. But it was Henry that said, oh, you'd have to, it's fantastic move. move. And you'd say, you'd have to say on the course of the first half, they deserve to be that five points up because they had all the play. If they only went down that two points up at halftime, Michael, Tip would feel very happy. And, and Brian Cody said, listen, we better keep going. That's going to be, should be a lot more up. But they, they probably wouldn't have won the game if, if they didn't get that goal. Yeah, but they got a goal in the second half as well, Liam. And this is again another one at a crucial stage just to keep that gap there. Yeah, it was. It gave them a bit of breathing space that they needed as they're coming into the final quarter, you know. And, it, you know, they worked the ball out well. Tommy Watch, I thought he, he picked his man very quickly again today. And here's Michael Rice. And it's a good clearance up the field. And you watch Eddie Brennan. Look, he's, at, he's actually going behind his own 65. And here he comes now at pace. Colin Finley spots him. And he makes a great run down the throat of the, the temporary defence. And he comes in. And, like, he still has a bit to do here now. But again, a hand pass and just one touch. And top corner. I mean, what a, what a finish. And you think Paddy Stable's going to get in and get the block in? He was the very, very close. They kept Eddie Br Brennan awake during the week. That's no. for sure. <laughs> run like that. But I mean, if you're a youngster watching this, Michael, if look yeah. from that angle. That is absolutely far fantastic. Finish. Fantastic. Vera's burn to be in Crow Park yeah. on a given day to get that touch without putting it into the hand mm. and hit it like that. It if was you, absolutely fantastic. To put it into the hand to be tackled. And even as it mm. was, Paddy Stable was the hard not to get a flick through it. We'll just show yeah. you, like, mm. you have to be so, so, so sharp. Yeah. Tip did get their goal. They needed a goal to, to put themselves back in with a chance. Now, they did get it. Yeah, they made a, a few changes, made two changes at half time. You know, that they weren't winning a half hour battle. They were kind of struggling in, in, in a lot of aspects of the field. You know, Bomber Mar here tried his heart out. Ball goes into Lar. It's set out to Pat Burke. Now, it's a good finish by Pat Burke, but I'm sure David Heverdy in, 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 in the Kilkenny goal will be disappointed that it actually went past him. But it was the tonic that Tipperary needed. They needed to get themselves back into the game. They needed to get a goal. And it did lift them for a period of time. And you would say, yes, that Kilkenny are out on their feet. This is the, the Tipperary that we've seen in the past. But it never materialised, Michael. It never materialised on the basis, right, that they were so tight back in that defence. You never got the opportunity to see them get one-on-one -on -one with the Kilkenny guys. And was, that was been Tipperary's trade for, trade for the last two years, taking on a marker, getting into open space. And that was never allowed today. They were closed down at every opportunity. They were, and I spoke before the commercial break about some of the errors, we we'll say, or that either Tip made or they were forced into the perhaps. Well, probably forced into the because mm -hmm. a few ha fierce hard hits going on. But that's the way these guys play. Like, don't watch this. McGrath gets a rattle here from Michael Finley, put back on his backside, tries to hamper it across, and breaks down here, and actually rounds up a great score. Like, again, Richie Powell does a lot of work. All the Kilkenny forwards score today, Richie left or right, bang over the bar. He would have been disappointed last year, Richie Powell, because a mantle fell in with Henry gone. But, like, again, Kilkenny have the ball, but like they're put under terrible pressure. Now, look, John O'Brien here flicks it out, where he's going to get it, hangs around, it's too long there. 
breaking ball. And once it gets into a breaking ball situation, Kilkenny are very, very good and always very good at the hand pass, extra man the whole time. Like it was, it, there, were, there weren't unforced errors, there were actually forced errors, but like you won't get away without the first touch really, really sharp against Kilkenny, especially in Ireland, Ireland final. Like, and this was happening all over the pitch, it was hard for Tip to set in. Again, this ball is half blocked down, again, Kilkenny break with it. Like they did this on numerous occasions, mm, but it yeah. shows you how I mean, much that Tip and Kilkenny were up to the game. It's a wonderful yeah. scorer. Yeah. I mean, this is but, Colin Finley yeah. with that hooker in the matter mm. and put the ball back over the bear off his left hand side. You know, Colin Finley finished up with two pints and the guy wasn't even supposed to be fit today but you know again they just picked off the great scores they worked tirelessly hard for each other today mm -hmm. I mean they had an, an amount of possession uh, in the second half period Tipperary an awful lot of ball and there was an awful lot of ball went into the forward line but unfortunately it just it wasn't their day you know the Lara didn't it wasn't, wasn't a low play today and you have to give credit to Kilkenny for that they came in with that tactic stopped the supply going into the full forward line no score from, from uh, Lara Cobbert or Owen Kelly from play we win the match Tip would have known this, Liam. They would have known exactly what Kilkenny were likely to do to set themselves up against them today. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but I guess you see, that's the thing about the match. You know, you just got to set the intensity. And unfortunately, today, as I said, the likes of Larino, they just couldn't get on the ball. Mm. You know, Kilkenny were like men possessed. Mm. You know, when that ball was there to be, they were just mm. breaking and their support play. You know, when Tommy Walsh got the ball inside, back in his own full back line, he hit a man directly outside in 15, 20 yards, pop pass up the field. You know, the support, Paul Murphy hit. Four or five balls, on, you know, with no one on him because hand pass every hand time. Pass, they were very, they very good. They weren't bombing balls as mm, much yeah. this time, right? It was the short 10 or 15 meter pass out to a guy in space and the cross field ball, the angle ball across, you know, rather than going down high into the square. I mean, they played the game very, very well. Okay, from the uh, thoughts of the former tip manager, let's hear from the present day tip manager, Declan Ryan. He's talking to Claire McNamara. <coughs> uh, Declan, disappointing day. You weren't able to hold on to the title. I suppose this was a game you were chasing right from the start. Yeah, it's a very disappointed uh, dressing room inside there, Claire. You know, uh, these guys prepared very well all year there, and uh, just didn't happen. I suppose today we were lucky to win only five points down, probably at half time. Um, kick any shots, have a hunger again, and they showed all the hallmarks that has made this a great team. They did look the sharper and the hungrier side. You, you couldn't get into your rhythm really from from the start. That's the way it looked, yeah. And uh, I suppose the goal in the first half was a killer blow, but we were lucky, lucky to go maybe only five points down. You know, hats off to Kilkenny. I think that the show that they're real champions the way they came back and uh, you know played like that today. I suppose they were hugely successful as well in keeping some of your key men quiet, the likes of Lar. Yeah, I suppose if we had to get a couple of more goals from Lar there, you know, it would have been um, a different story. But he was well marshaled today, you know. That's the way it goes, I suppose. Uh, you know, I'm very proud of the guys that you know they've trained very, very well all year. Train savage hard and it's just it's a pity to be in a uh, losing dressing room. You needed goals, you did get one, but I suppose it, it wasn't enough. Yeah, I think we're just hanging on by our coattails there, you know. The Kilkenny seem to be moving the ball a bit better and seem to be hungry, hungrier today and uh, just hats off to Kilkenny, they're, they're a savage team and uh, they're full, full, fully deserved our victory today. When that goal went in, did it give you great hope? Did you feel you could get back into it? Yeah, I suppose it did, yeah, that, uh, you know, we felt maybe that would drive us on a little bit, but uh, we, were, we struggled to get out of the blocks today for, for whatever reason, and, uh, you know, Kilkenny probably looked a bit hungrier and a bit fresher than us for, you know, for whatever reason. Um, we'll have to sit down and have a look at it again, but um, you know, I'm just very proud of the Tipperary guys there. They're all inside there. They're very disappointed. They've worn the blue and gold jersey with great pride all year, you know, so full credit to our guys as well. I suppose they didn't ever find the form that we've seen earlier in this year and in Munster particularly. Was the favourites tag or the burden of being champions to that way heavily? I don't think so, no. I think you, you go out every day and you try to play as well as you can and if you do that, well, you know, you're going to have a good chance. Uh, I suppose today we didn't play as well as we can. Maybe we weren't let. Uh, you know, we'll just have to sit down and have a look at it. Of course, your first year in charge and this is a, a, a young team to a large extent. Uh, are you happy that they can learn from this experience and, and bounce back and be stronger for it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, the average age is something like 24 or 5 there, so there's a lot of there's a lot of winners inside in that dressing room there, you know, guys that have been very successful at underage and that, so I think the future is positive for Tipperary, you know, we, we can have a lot to look forward to. It's going to be a tough couple of days now, but um, I suppose we'll, we'll get back at it now at club level and uh, take it from there. Okay, well, Declan, hard luck and thanks for talking to us. And that, of course, the Tipperary manager, Declan Ryan, there. One of the things from a Tipperary point of view, gentlemen, is that unlike Kenny, who put, you know, they lost in Ireland last year, they bounced straight back and they win one. For Tip, there seems to be that gap between winning all Ireland's. Yeah, you know, the record speaks for itself. Mm. You know, won in 89, mm. you know, lost again in 19, came back again in one in, one in 91, you know. So, again, it's just, you know, that's 45, 46 years now where Tip have failed to put back-to-back -back titles there. You know, everyone... 
came here with a real expectation, I think, from Tipperary today that this team are capable of doing it. But, you know, you got to give credit to Kilkenny, you know. I mean, they, they came uh, with a real intensity to their play today and, you know, fully deserved their victory. But, you know, it, it's, it is a tough, you know, as we said earlier on, we've seen it all today, mm. all the time. The loser, you know, you may as well be eight to second. So like, the you next, know, the next decade of Brian Cody is about to begin. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is it. Like in Kilkenny, he's going to stay there as long as he can because the guy is just phenomenal. Like you know, and he has it down to a tee, and the pitch is very near him. And he he, he absorbed. He's a hurling man, Michael. Like he he'll come to Fitzgibbon Cup matches and league mm. matches. He's got, like that's his passion. You won't see him at a horse race meeting or playing golf. Usually, he's just he's passionate about hurling, and he has that kind of you know method about him. Now whether it he could leave, it'd be a lovely time. He's leaving as a winner. Last year, like he'd feel he couldn't leave because after losing, yeah. so it's. Up, like in Kilkenny, Ned Quinn will just say, "Listen, do whatever you want to do, and whatever he does, like he deserves great credit because he's put he's put them up in a pedestal again. They're they're, mm. they're an unbelievable team. There's no question about that. It's pretty much time for us to go here at Croke Park now. Before we leave you, a reminder that the Sunday game tonight is a.